Hey, it's Tactical Painter back out in the Suits Crafting Woodshop. Come on out to the shop. In an earlier video, we showed you how to make a standard editor pen. In this video, we're going to show you how to make this pen that takes a standard G2 ink refill. So come on out to the shop and we'll show you how it turns out. So we're going to get this editor conversion, or this editor pen conversion going. We're going to be doing this one with a G2 ink refill. So this is a blue G2 that you guys usually see me do with the rollerball pens. Um, but we're going to be converting this editor pen. Now these editor pens usually use a Parker refill, but what it does is the Parker butts up against the back of the end post right here and so it presses against there and then it has a spring that comes in pushes against the shoulder and then that spring pushes against the inside of the tip here and that keeps the ink back in place and not falling forward now if you see the ink on this Parker actually would stick plenty forward through the tip if that spring wasn't holding it back in place at the right distance. And so all that determines how that ink sits within the editor pen is the length of the tube. You see the length of the tube is what sets how the ink comes out the front and that spring just holds that Parker refill against the back here. So if we were to adjust the length of our tube that we insert into our blank then that would adjust how far in or out this tip would sit on the ink so if we went out a little longer it'd sit out further a little shorter and it'd come in a little bit a little like a trombone so if we grab this Pilot G2 refill we take the Parker out of here put that Pilot G2 in you see it fits nicely inside the back of the post cap. Seat's really nice back there. A little tighter fit, I think, than even the Parker does. Yeah, that Parker's got a lot of room, but that Pilot G2, it's almost like it was made for that. It's a beautiful fit. And if we take our end cap, you'll see there's room to spare coming out of that tip. So if we were to set it to the depth that we want, which would be right here and we make sure that post cap is seated firmly on there we can take a pair of calipers measure that distance and know exactly how long we need that to be make sure that's seated firmly on there again almost need a third hand 3.05 inches so that's how long we need to cut this tube in order to put in place of our original tube to make this into a G2 editor pen 3.05 inches and that will look fantastic just like that and we'll still have all the same function we'll just have to customize the spring so that the spring is shorter so that it purchases on the sh this shoulder right here and then mates against the front of our refill like normal so that it holds it back in place as well. So now we need to mark on our 8mm tube how long 3.05 inches is going to be. Mark that and then we'll get that cut to length. And then we will mark that with our sharpie. And it doesn't have to be a precise mark because what we're going to do is we will get that cut just a little long, glue that into the blank, and then when we grind that down in order to true up the ends, we'll set that final depth. So that'll work out nicely. So let's go get that cut. All right, so we just got our two sections cut on the lathe. So as you can see here, I've cut this one just a little bit longer than 3.05 inches. And so when we go to true this up, we'll get that cleaned off. So let's get our blank drilled, we'll get this glued in there and we'll get this going. Okay, so we've got our blank here. We're going to be doing this one today in pink camo. we got a customer who wants this in pink camo with a G2 conversion. So let's go ahead and mark our cut line right there. Don't have to leave ourselves a whole lot of room because as we know we're going to be grinding off a little bit of brass anyway. So let's get this baby cut and drilled.
clean up this end. Just want to give it a little bit of a dimple there. We can check up our 8mm drill bit and get that glued in. There we go. Now we're through. That 8 millimeter drill bit almost wasn't long enough for that. But we got a good entry hole. We got a good clean exit hole. So it turned out just fine. Alright, so we're going to get our tube glued in. So on this end is the end that I drilled into. And this hole always ends up being just slightly wider than the, re than the hole on the exit hole. And so there's always just just the slightest little gap and it's not quite as tight as on this end. So I always, when I'm doing a single tube blank, like to glue closest to the exit hole. That way I have the tightest fit possible. And this acrylic, when I got down to the drill, the end of the drill bit, I actually ran out of fluting. And so some of the cutoffs were trying to come out the fluting and it was jammed up and it caused a little bit of heat on this end. And so I want to make sure that I, I don't get all of that melt in there, a little bit of melt happen. And so I want to have it as close to this end as I possibly can. So I'm going to face that end up and take my thick CA glue, I'm going to put a good amount of glue on this end. get this going. Now we got a lot of length to cover here, just over three inches worth, so we're going to want to push this in fast. We do not want it to set up on us. There we go. Hit that with a little activator to seal it in place. Now we'll just drill in a little bit of thin CA from this back side here. There we go. Hit that with a little activator, seal that in. And that's ready to be turned by tomorrow. Okay, so we're going to go in and get this trued up now. I've got two ends on here. The first end that I've got, you can see I don't have a whole lot to have to trim off. The second end I have to go in a little bit further and this was that end that I was trying to stay away from having to use. So when we go to set our full length, we're going to trim more back on this end because this has a little bit looser fit and so I want to get it as, as much of the safe, as much of the tight fit as I possibly can. So we're going to put this in here and we're going to get this trued up. So I'll flip it around, put it in on the other side, and we'll true this side up. We're going to set the calipers here to 3.05 inches, just like so. We'll go ahead and mark that. Right there, so we really don't have to go in all too far. So we got just a little ways to go, very small amount. All right, and now we've got a perfect fit. Let's get this turned up. So I've got my speed turned up to 3,700 RPM. So here we go.
All right, well, we got that turned down to the bushings, got it turned around, got a little bit of a taper down to each end, which is what I was going for. So let's go ahead and uh, clean this up and we'll hit it with our polishing pads. All right, so I got my lathe turned down to 1800 RPM. I'm just going to hit it with some polishing paper in order to get this smoothed out and get some of these uh, ripples and lines going. Just a couple here and there and uh, get this cleaned up. Alright, I'm going to go through hit that with my polishing pads and I will see you guys back at the buffing wheels. Buffing wheel out, I just recharged it with some rouge, so let's just go ahead and get this polished up. Alright, let me take that off, flip it around, and get the opposite side. Flip that around. And do the opposite side. And there we go. Now that blank is absolutely flawless. Alright, time for the assembly of this pen. Now the assembly of this pen is really super simple. There's only just a couple of things that you gotta watch out for. The tip of the pen has two pieces and they come together usually and they unthread apart and this is how you access your ink refill once you've put it together so when they come in your kit they're usually tightened all the way down and they hold themselves in place well when you go to press those together loosen that up slightly that way it's not fully tight and seated against your barrel because if you do that they might not come back part later and that's a problem so be sure loosen that like half a turn and you'll be set so now the only thing we have left to do because both of these ends are the exact same size just decide which you, end you want to be down which end you want to be up and I think I want this end to be to the ink I want this end to be the, to the ink so we're gonna put this in Make sure I undid that a half a turn. That's not good. Alright, so I got those two ends put in. And you can see my tip threads on nicely, just like that. Now all we got to do is we need to set our ink in there. And then we need to cut our spring in order to customize the fit of our uh, pen otherwise it will come in and out just like that so we want to cut our spring down so that way it's a little shorter than what it is currently so let's put our spring on here and let's just see how far we can compress that not all the way so let's take off let's go right to just two links past the tip of the pen and see what that does. Alright, so I got that cut and that left a little bit of a sharp end sticking out so I just went over to my grinder and just ground it flat again. So we're going to put that end to our ink and we'll put this double end out to our front. We'll slide that down into our pen and see if that lets us thread that on. And indeed it does. It is a bit of a tight fit, but our ink stays in place. It's not falling forward at all. It's holding firmly back against the back of the pen here. So that's done. Cap clips on just like so. And that pen's completed. It's pretty nice. These are sure a nice pen. Cap comes off just like that. And it even posts on the back while you write. The uh, added length is a nice feature. As, as they are, the editor pen is a little short. You know, it's a little shorter, obviously, than it is now um, in its original form. 
but once you clip the cap on to the original form then it gives it a little bit extra length but with this added length for the G2 refill you can almost write with it on your own at least with my Gigantor hands so that worked out pretty good alright so that turned out real nice the G2 ink refill on these things is absolutely fantastic it's your guys' favorite ink refill I've found so far you guys love that ink, ink refill but the nice thing about how this pen's set up is you can put a G2 conversion in it you can put a Frixion you can put a Pilot V5RT and if you don't know what I'm talking about look them up they're awesome ink refills and people who use pens on a regular basis love those ink refills and so this pen can do it all so if you check out my Etsy site you can actually find this pen not this one because this one's a customer's pen but you can find these pens on my Etsy site at suitscrafting.etsy.com I have these pens available you can select from any of those ink refills including rollerballs I can set these up for rollerballs as well so come on by the shop check them out they're really neat really awesome pens I absolutely like these the only thing about the conversions to know is that because you're adding length in the tube they do end up just slightly longer than the standard pen not real not a whole lot longer but just long enough that it does make a little difference but in the hand it actually feels nicer in my opinion longer than the standard does so the standard real nice small pen it's thin lightweight a little short until you put the cap on the back this one just as comfortable writing it without the cap on it as it is with so these are real nice pens come on by the shop be sure to check them out be sure to like share and subscribe this video as well I'll put a subscribe button right here for you check out some of my other videos here on the sides thank you so much for joining me out in the shop today this is Suits Crafting out in my wood shop signing out